Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, precious beloved saint of the wrecking yard ministry. You and I have been wrecked because of an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, never, ever, ever to be the same again. I wanted to endeavor to uh, bring to you a recorded message um, due to uh, uh, other commitments and uh, other places. Uh, we are unable to uh, bring forth a live uh, message this week, and so I wanted to uh, share this with you and, um, and again uh, endeavor to fellowship with you around God's holy word. Beloved, the uh, title of this presentation is are all sins the same? Are all sins equal in God's sight? Beloved, uh, most Christians I've encountered believe that all sins are the same or they are equal. That regardless of what sin it is and what we are capable of committing, uh, that all of these sins are equal or are the same. Uh, is a little lie... There are no little lies, but are little lies the same as stealing? Is murder the same as lust? Is pornography the same as arson? Is pride the same as idolatry? Uh, beloved, in, uh, in most uh, Christians' uh, view and theology, they would say that all sins are the same. And uh, so I want to endeavor to uh, bring forth what your Bible says, which is the ultimate authority. Now, uh, beloved, this is not a, a treatise or this is not a comprehensive look at uh, the, uh, this, this uh, title of is all sins equal or the same. It would take probably, for me anyway, 20, 25 hours to really uh, bring the fullness out of what your Bible declares. So uh, give uh, some room. I know some of the lingering questions you will probably have uh, within uh, this topic. Uh, but just know I want to bring an answer. According to your Bible, are all sins the same? I want you, if you're able, to just uh, note in your Bible, if you're listening or following along, uh, Luke chapter 12 Verses 42 through 48, which we will touch on. Luke chapter 12, verses 42 through 48. And then we will conclude our time together and read the entire chapter of Job chapter 31. Job 31. So I want to pray and, um, and move right in. Are all sins the same? So, Father, I thank you again for the rich honor and privilege to share the beautiful gospel of good news. You have said, blessed are the feet and the souls of them that carry the gospel of good news. And each of us watching and listening today, I am assured that the gospel is written in each and every man and woman's heart. And so I declare what your word says, that blessed shall be the souls of their feet that carry the gospel wherever they go. I pray you would teach us, mature us, and grow us today, that we might share in the bounty of what you've given us. We honor and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, once again, are all sins the same? Are all sins equal? And what does your Bible say? That is the ultimate authority uh, that you and I have. Number one, beloved, we must realize in terms of just foundation, I have different levels of Christians listening and watching and those that I endeavor to disciple each and every single week. And so bear with me if you are a... Uh, tabernacle saint and you are a father in the faith, um, uh, just uh, allow me to uh, share some of the foundations of this. Uh, first, we realize that we are all sinners, uh, the Bible declares, and we have all sinned, Romans 3, 23, that all People have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So um, if I was able to come and quiz you, whether you are a barley saint, wheat saint, tabernacle saint, whatever 
category you are in in God's maturing process, I want you to be able to share this with other people and uh, have a scripture or two uh, to be able to share with those others that we are all sinners and we all have all committed sins, Romans 3.23. Again, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And beloved, just one of those sins can keep us eternally separated from God. Okay, you don't have to be someone who murdered someone else to be a, a sinner. Any sin that we have committed, the lie, the uh, stealing of the pack of gum, whatever it might be, one sin, the Bible says, if you have violated one aspect of God's word, you have violated all of it, it says. So again, we're all and have sinned. Uh, if you're number two, um, the, the word sin actually in the Greek means harmonteno, harmonteno. What does sin actually mean? Well, according to your Bible, it means to miss the mark. Uh, it means to wander from the straight and narrow path. Uh, it means to trespass and to violate God's law. Violate God's law. Well, how did sin get here anyway? Sin came into your life and mine, or let's say the sinful nature, or natural to sin, we sin because we have a nature to sin or had a nature to sin. And so how did that get here anyway? According to Romans chapter 5 verse 19, sin entered the bloodstream of all mankind because of one man's, listen now, one man's disobedience. He said because of the Sin of disobedience of one man, Adam. All sin now has come into humanity. Fortunately, the Bible says in that verse that, yea, through one man, now we have access to righteousness or right standing with God through the man, Jesus Christ, listen, and his obedience. Again, if I had time, I would just circle uh, those uh, words within the, your Bible uh, to emphasize the need for you and I to be obedient and to obey God's Word. How did this happen? Well, Adam and Eve sinned, fell through temptation, and now uh, we have um, a, a, a sinful natural. We have a tendency to commit sins um, within our own life and so it's natural to sin it's natural to sin and yet God who is all-knowing he wrote the end from the beginning he brought a remedy uh, for you and I and please listen and that is that we might receive his gift of Jesus Christ the Bible says that he is the mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. And if you accept him as your Lord and Savior, confess your sins before him, he is just and uh, righteous to uh, cleanse you and I from our sins and declare that we are in right standing with him through the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Scripture, 1 John chapter 1, 7 through 10. 7 through 10. Just uh, confessing your sins. Lord, forgive me for my sins. I am in need of, uh, of, a, of a Savior, Jesus Christ, that I might be um, uh, reconciled unto you, that I might have an eternal home in heaven and a life here filled with peace peace and love and joy and also beloved God will then give you a new natural a new nature he calls it a divine nature uh, found in 2nd Peter chapter 1 verse 4 2nd Peter 1 4 so now your natural isn't to commit sins anymore your nature, your natural, is now to, uh, to actually have acts of righteousness on the earth that you and I live in. The Bible says once you receive Jesus Christ, God's remedy for sin in our lives, Micah chapter 7 verse 19, 
Micah 7, 19, he throws away your sins as far as east is to west and buries them in the deepest of seas. Oh, that should get someone off their chair and begin to shout and declare hallelujah. That should get someone who's listening and driving their car to pull over and honk their horn that God has uh, no longer remembers my sins in yours and has thrown them into the deepest of seas. And so now you and I, through that uh, uh, beautiful uh, uh, work of Christ on the cross, now we have the power through His Holy Spirit to no longer, listen, be slaves of sin, no longer a slave to sin, but now you and I are slaves of righteousness. Scripture, Romans 6, 12 through 23. Romans 6, 12 through 23. Now, beloved, uh, your Bible does declare, now please listen, here we go, that not all sins are created equal or the same. Your Bible declares in a number of passages, I'm just going to give you one. I have three, but due to the sake of time constraints uh, today for us, I'm going to give you one uh, 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 passage of Scripture I have three more, Luke chapter 12, verses 42 through 48. Not all sins, according to your Bible, are created equal. And the Lord said, Who then is faithful and wise, a wise steward over what I've given them? Again, he's looking. He said, Who then is faithful and who is a wise, a wise steward? In terms of what God has entrusted you with, His Word, His, His uh, uh, Holy Spirit, the experiences He's given you, the, uh, the understanding of, uh, of, 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 of His kingdom. He said, who, who then is faithful in a wise steward whom the Master will make, listen now, ruler over His household and to give them their portion of food in due season? Watch now, verse 43, blessed, and a blessing comes to those or to that servant whom his master will find doing so when he comes. He's giving a, a parable here, truly I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he has. Okay, verse 45, but if the servant says in his heart, well, my master is slow in coming, he is delayed, and begins to beat the male and female slaves and servants, and to eat and drink and to be drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he's not looking for him. And at an hour when he is not aware, he will cut him in two and appoint him a portion with the unbelievers. Oh, there's a lot packed in here. I don't have time to get to. Verse 47, And that servant who knew, watch now, the servant who knew his master's will, key verse right here, and did not prepare himself or do according to his master's will, he shall be beaten with many stripes. But he who did not know fully the master's will, yet committed things deserving of stripes, shall be beaten with few of them. Beloved, did you hear that? Verse 47, the servant who knew the master's will and didn't prepare himself or do according to the master's will, he shall be beaten with many stripes. Look at the punishment. He who did not know the master's will fully, yet committed things deserving of punishment and stripes, he shall be beaten with few. For everyone to whom much is given, from him much is uh, required, and to whom much has been committed of him uh, will be even asked the more. I just want you to see there's so much to pull out of here, but I just want you to see two things. Number one, a reminder that God is looking for faithful stewards, wise stewards, that will endeavor to walk and to live and to fulfill God's will according to this Bible and according to his a revelation in your heart. I want you to realize you can also see that if so, God has rewards for you and I for that man and woman 
Uh, he's going to give you rewards and he's going to give you, he said here, ruler over uh, aspects of his kingdom. You could also note Matthew 24 that lists the very same thing. So there's blessings and rewards coming for those who endeavor to walk and to live in obedience to God's will. He goes on, secondly here, verses 45 through 48. He says here now, but if the servant says in his heart, my master is delays in his coming and then begins to go rogue. That's what I'm saying. It <laughs> says that in your Bible. He goes rogue. He says now because he knew the master's will punishment. Watch. He's going to be beaten with many stripes. And even the individual that didn't fully know God's word or his will aspects of ignorance didn't know not a bad word just means didn't know fully still going to have punishment and he was beaten with fewer stripes well what's all that mean here we go are all sins equal are all sins the same according to your bible no why because you see here that the punishment is different with two servants in this passage depending on what they did uh, acts of commission or what they didn't do acts of omission so again are all sins the same are all sins equal according to your bible and the answer is no not all sins are the same not all sins carry the same punishment judgment and discipline within them a lie is not the same as adultery they will be handled differently a murder is going to be different than pride and a haughty spirit. Uh, uh, you have, watch, sins of the flesh and you have sins of the spirit, all of which are different sins and all of which carry different ramifications according to your Bible. Different levels of punishment in proportion to what was committed. Some were Receive many stripes uh, because of not fulfilling or, or walking out God's will. Others, again, few stripes. Okay, so not all sins are the same in God's word. Now, watch. Are Christians punished for their sins? Are Christians punished for their sins? First, lay some foundation here. Like I said, this can be 20 hours if you had time. <laughs> Are Christians punished for their sins? I got some Christians that, uh, um, that uh, feel God is going to punish them in heaven and, and haven't been taught according to this Bible. So let's, let's touch this a minute. Are Christians punished for their sins? Romans chapter 6, 1 through 2, giving you Bible. First of all, before we answer that, foundations, true Christians don't want to sin. So are Christians punished for their sins? Well, first of all, true Christians don't want to sin. Romans 6, 1 through 2, uh, the, the Bible says that our hearts have been changed. We don't want to hurt God. We don't want to miss the mark. We don't want to go off the straight and narrow path. True born-again Christians don't want to sin. Uh, secondly, realize 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. The Bible says here that uh, if you and I are born, truly born again of God, that the seed of Jesus Christ in you, you cannot continue in repetitive sins. He says there will not be a continuation of these sins in your life. They will eventually, through process, they will be extracted, exterminated, and removed from your life in his process, big word, called sanctification. So if you're born of God, you won't continue in sin, for the seed of Christ is in you, beloved. It's that divine natural. Realize as well in Hebrews 10, verse 26, that if I, as a Christian, have knowledge of, uh, of what God uh, 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 shares as sins in my life, watch now, 
but I continue to do them anyway. But I just in my free will, and I say I'm going to keep doing them anyway. I know God wants me uh, uh, no longer sleeping with her, but I'm going to keep doing it anyway over and over and over. The Bible says that you and I risk um, uh, um, um, losing uh, the sacrifice of Christ on the cross for my sins. That's what the Bible says. If I continue in deliberate, continual sin, there is no longer a sacrifice for my sins. So either I am not truly born again or I am resisting and disobedient to God's word to the point where I am risking I'll no longer have Christ as the sacrifice for my sins, for my sins. Next, beloved, listen now. This is really important right here. God won't punish you in heaven for your sins on earth. Christian, if you are a true born-again Christian, God's child, and you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, which we all will and give an account of our life, what has been done in the body, whether good or evil, you will not be punished for your sins done on the earth. I'm going to say it again. Your Bible is replete with underlining this fact that you won't be punished for your sins as a Christian done in your past, or current, or even future. If you repent, receive forgiveness, and your heart is right before God, you will not have any punishment in heaven as you come before the great white throne judgment or it's called the judgment seat of Christ. What will happen? Here we go. You will then lose rewards that God would want to bestow upon you in the thousand year millennium and in the new heavens and the new earth. You read there in Luke 12, uh, 42 through 48, he said, I'm going to give this one who was uh, walking as a good steward, faithful and, uh, and just uh, as a good steward and wise, I'm going to give them a portion of the kingdom. Matthew 24 and even 25 shares all Jesus said in another area. He said, I'll give some five cities and I'll give some 10 cities. I'm going to give others authority and power and position in the thousand year millennial reign of Christ on the earth and the new heavens and the new earth. You're, you will suffer the loss of rewards of what God wanted, intended to give you because of those sins done in this life. Done in this life. God, again, won't punish you in heaven for your sins done on the earth. Well, what's going to happen? If I'm going to quiz you, I would say, so what's going to happen? Well, God punish you, uh, Christian man, for the sins done in this uh, body upon the, upon the earth if you're truly born again. Your answer should be no, he won't punish me, but I will lose rewards that he would want to bestow upon me in the life to come and even in this life. Even in this life, you'll have a loss of rewards, position, and uh, appointments that he has for you according to his kingdom on earth and the new heavens and the new earth as well. But watch now. Well, what is, what is you know, then, then what is going to happen for for my sins here on the earth as a Christian. Well, you could, watch, you could encounter judgment, discipline, uh, punishment on the earth for committing sins um, in this life here on the earth. You're not going to be punished in heaven, but you are. You could, there's key word, could incur uh, judgment and discipline uh, uh, from God uh, upon the earth that you and I live in. I'll give you scripture, 1 Peter 4, 17. Judgment, discipline by God begins where? Begins in the house of God. What's that mean? That means that my sins, God will account them uh, at some point, uh, possibly in this life. He said, I'm going to clean up my house before I clean up uh, this world. But that only comes through the reception 
of His Son, Jesus Christ. So yes, no punishment in heaven, but judgment and discipline could happen here in this life and on the earth because of those sins. Even the Mosaic Levitical law had punishments uh, for the Israelites and the, and the Jews. Um, they had even different levels of punishment, even in the Old Testament law. Moving boundary lines, you know, encroaching upon someone else's property, murder, stealing, on and on. They endeavored the law to address many of sins of the flesh, uh, not so much sins of the spirit except idolatry. Um, and so, uh, again, in New Testament, uh, he lays out sins of the flesh and sins of the spirit. And so now watch. Uh, there are different levels of uh, discipline and judgment uh, and punishment for the Christian on earth. There are different levels of discipline, judgment, and punishment depending on these things. So let me just kind of wrap that uh, area up here. Is there punishment for the true Christian for sins that I've committed and possibly will commit, pray not, on the earth? As I am alive, is there going to be punishment? No, there isn't going to be punishment. What's going to happen? There'll probably be a loss of, the Bible says there will be a loss of rewards, a loss of position, and a loss of prestige in God's eyes, in the sight of your brothers, uh, on and on. But there will be no punishment. But there could be punishment on the earth and judgment, discipline, on the life that you are living here now. It depends on, it depends on your revelation and knowledge of God's word. Well, how do I know if I'm going to be disciplined or judged? Well, we know God's word says you certainly uh, 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 will be at some point if it continues. Uh, could be, uh, depends on your position. If you're a minister and you're preaching this gospel, the Bible says you and I are held at a higher accountability for that judgment and that discipline. Am I going to be disciplined and judged? Well, if you continue on in those sins, at some point you have a high likelihood, the Bible says, and it depends on the level of a light and revelation you have of God's will uh, in respect. You saw where he said uh, the, the, the servant that knew God's will but didn't do it. Um, uh, what's he saying? There's greater judgment for greater knowledge and revelation you and I have of God's Word. Of God's Word. That's why your Bible, uh, Jesus said, Woe to you, the city of Chorazin and the city of Bethsaida. If, if, if uh, um, the light and revelation um, that was given to you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, those two cities would have uh, repented and come unto me and received uh, appropriate uh, right standing, but you did not. The cities or villages of Chorazin and Bethsaida, they housed within those two villages and cities five of the apostles that were preaching and teaching and showing signs and wonders, and the people hardened their hearts and turned from them, and so God uh, levied judgment and discipline upon those two cities, because they were uh, required, he that's been given much, much is required. And so, depends on the revelation and knowledge of God's word, depends on my position, am I a minister? Going to be higher accountability and a higher watch and a higher probability. God's going to discipline and bring judgment and clean that up. Depends on your heart before God. Is there really brokenness or really a, a, a heart cry? We had someone that sent us uh, some... Uh, a, a prayer request they were uh, moving into sins and, uh, and 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 was beginning to repent and come back to uh, the straight path with God and uh, tears were uh, flowing uh, depends on your heart before God it depends on the length and duration of how do I know if I'm going to be judged or disciplines coming it's going to depend on the length and the duration of that sin Sometimes for some people, uh, God's gentle uh, whispering of his spirit doesn't seem 
uh, to move them into uh, uh, repentance or turning away from something. He has to come and shake the olive tree and uh, actually something of a judgment or a discipline that is needed for that heart uh, to begin to correct it because he loves you and I. What, he says, what father does not come and bring correction to their son? It's actually an act of love, not anger, but love. It depends on the kind of sin it is. It depends on the kind of sin it is. And so now I just want to uh, 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 pull out here uh, one of, um, of these uh, 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 sins within our Bible. And then I want to uh, read Job chapter 31. Job 31. So again, if I were to ask you, are you going to be punished for any sins done in this life, true Christian, when you are at the great white throne judgment slash the judgment seat of Christ, your answer should be a definite no. Well, what is going to happen? You are going to suffer the loss, as I would and will in some areas, probably of, you know, all of us in the past, whatevers, um, redeeming the time like you, but uh, uh, suffering loss of rewards, positions, other areas that he wants to bestow upon you and I. But you and I will and could have areas that God will judge and discipline you and I, depending on your revelation and knowledge of his word, your position before God and before God's people, your heart before him, the length and duration of sin, what kind of sin it is, can bring about sometimes a swift judgment, sometimes longer in duration. All of these factors play in this. I'm going to give you just one I want to share with you, and it's sexual sins. Sexual sins. It's one of many, but a beloved uh, I have here, I've written down 14 major ministers with global influence in the last two years uh, that have either confessed or it has been exposed of sexual sins in their life. And the destruction, please listen, the destruction that comes with sexual sins um, is is savage now again i'm not going to try to bring all of the sins that you and i are capable of doing and opening them up and referring to them just this one for now why because it's so current with ministers and i know with other people and i want to underline it and to say sexual sins are some of the most destructive sins um, that uh, you and I and that your Bible speaks about. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, 12 through 14, you know David who sat on the throne and currently sits, uh, Jesus sits on the throne of David, the Bible says. Even though David had a heart for God, he still had sins. One of them which was most destructive was his sexual sins. You know he had sins with Bathsheba that moved into murder of her husband Uriah. There was a great cover-up uh, strategy that David uh, endeavored to employ. Um, it continued to move in where it caused havoc and wreckage within his children. Rebellion took place and uh, it continued on and on. Uh, he lost his firstborn child, his son with Bathsheba. And even all the way through the Bible, Bathsheba was, listen, was never called David's uh, wife. Even in the New Testament, Bathsheba was called Uriah's wife, even though she married David. I just underlined some of that, again, to say that sexual sins are some of the most destructive sins uh, within uh, your Bible and within the lives of people. These 14 ministers, uh, again, that have either confessed or it has been exposed, which is a discipline, a judgment by God. Uh, now the people and uh, uh, the lambs and some of the sheep uh, have uh, fallen away. And uh, we receive some emails and 
and other areas of uh, uh, past communications and even know uh, some of these ministers, it's very, very sad. And I'm sharing this with you to bring great caution, protection, and hopefully underline the deep reverence and fear that your Bible speaks about concerning walking out your salvation. Walking out your salvation. And I've mentioned two, over two years ago that I believed we were living in uh, the fifth feast, which is the Feast of Trumpets. Trumpets, along with many other uh, attributes, is a cleansing feast. It is the beginning of uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, which number five is the Feast of, uh, of uh, uh, Trumpets, then the Feast of at one moment, and then the great and mighty harvest that God will bring in at the culmination of the 6,000th day, culmination of the harvest called Tabernacles. This is the fifth feast. You had the feast of Passover, feast of unleavened bread. You had the feast of uh, first fruits, feast of Pentecost, and then number five, the feast of trumpets, a cleansing feast. In two years, 14 major global ministries uh, with, uh, with outreach of, of just incomprehensible uh, 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 influence have now been exposed, have now fallen, and the consequences of their family, their children, congregations, and multiple millions across the earth that we're living in. So I underline sexual sins for those that are watching, listening. Beloved, uh, I'll read Job 31 and then we'll close. But maybe for someone uh, like this person that even emailed today, you will flee from that arena within uh, your life. Job chapter 31, I'll be reading out of the King James Version. And I'll read, the, it's such a beautiful, uh, even reading it again today, I just started to kind of tear up because there was so much in this. And uh, so I'll read this and then we'll pray and close. Job 31, King James says, Job says, I've made a covenant with my eyes. Talking about sexual sins, just that one. Not talking about pride, haughtiness, seven things God hates, and just this right now because it's happening and the Feast of Trumpets is blowing. Job said, I made a covenant with mine eyes. He said, why should I look upon a woman with my eyes, with lust? Verse 2, for what portion of God is there from above and what inheritance of the Almighty from on high, if I do this, is it not destruction uh, to the wicked and a punishment, a judgment with such workers of iniquity? Verse 4, does he not see my ways and count all of my steps? If I have walked with vanity or if my foot has uh, uh, brought forth deceit, let me be weighed in an even scale or balance that God may uh, know my integrity. Verse 7, if my steps have turned out of the way and my heart walked after my eyes, and if any uh, blot had cleaved to my hands, let me sow and let another eat thereof. Let my offspring uh, be rooted out. Verse 9, watch. If my heart has been deceived by a woman or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door for his, then let my wife, verse 10, grind meal at another's, and let others bow down to her. For this is a heinous crime, an iniquity to be punished by the judges. Verse 12, for it is a fire that consumes to destruction. Watch, and would root out and root up all of my increase in harvest. Let me pause that I mentioned to you. Sexual um, uh, 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 sins are the sum and one of the most destructive sins. He was, he's just going through all of this. And then he, he goes through and he goes, this is, a, this is an iniquity to be punished or judged and disciplined 
by judges. It's a, it's a fire that's going to bring destruction. And he says the harvest is going to be rooted up. Think about these 14 ministers and their harvest of the years that they have sown into the lives of people. And now that harvest has been rooted out. Rooted out. Uh, it has been, it's been uprooted and it's been, uh, 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 basically, that harvest is, is in some manner, according to Job, uh, um, you know, the influence and what has happened now, there's, you know, it's, 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 it's just a sad uh, condition and, and, a, and what uh, takes place. He says that sexual sins are going to uproot your harvest, going to uproot uh, your increase. Wow, it's just so sad to me because I know some of them and, and the years of sowing seed and working the, the, the field and, and the harvest and now um, uh, all of these here have large uh, fields of, of, of harvest and sheep and it's, it's uprooted. And now when you mention their name, it's almost a disdain for many within that uh, Influence. He goes on to say in verse 13, if I did not despise the cause of even my servants when they contended or asked me about this and that, what then shall I do when God rises up and he visits me? What shall I answer him if I'm not even listening to what my servants are saying or asking about me? Verse 15. Did he not make me in the womb and also make my servants? And did, uh, did he not fashion each of us in the womb? If I, have, if I have withheld from the poor for their desire, or have caused the eyes of the widow to fail, or if I have eaten uh, any morsels myself alone and the fatherless haven't eaten thereof, orphans. Verse 18, for from my youth he had brought me up and, and, uh, and, uh, and with a father and I have guided uh, 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 these from my mother's womb. Verse 19. If I have seen any perish for need of clothing or the poor without covering, if, if their, their lives have not been blessed by me, uh, if, if, if I did not try to warm them with the fleece of my sheep. Verse 22. If I have lifted my hand against the fatherless uh, when I saw help that I could give them in the gate, let my arm fall from my shoulder blade, my arm be broken from the bone, for destruction uh, from God and judgment was a terror to me, was fear to me, and by reason of His Highness, I could not do that. He had a healthy fear of God. Verse 24, if I made gold my hope, he was the richest man on the earth, the Bible says at this time, beloved. Verse 24, if I made gold my hope, or have said that fine gold, you are my confidence. If I have rejoiced because my wealth was great and because my hand had gotten so much of it. If I beheld the sun when it shined or the moon walking in brightness and my heart had been secretly enticed or my mouth had kissed my hand as if I did this. It would be an iniquity to be punished by the judge for I should have denied, uh, I would be then denying the God who is above. Verse 29, if I rejoice at the destruction of, watch this one now. If I, Job says, if I have rejoiced at the destruction of him that hated me or lifted up myself when evil was found of him. Oh, look what happened to him. He deserved it. Oh, I'm so glad. He said, now, if I had reacted that way or even felt that way, he said, neither have I suffered my mouth to sin by wishing a curse on his soul. If the men of my tabernacle or house said, oh, that we had his flesh, we cannot be satisfied. He's going on to say even those that hated him and even those that spoke of him and endeavored to do evil. He said, if I lifted up even my voice or even my heart against them, if I rejoiced in, in evil that came upon them, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm sinning and I'm wounding God's heart. He said, if I cover my transgressions as Adam, verse 33, by hiding my iniquity in my bosom. Wow. Verse 34, did I fear great multitude? If I even felt fear from the multitude or, or uh, contempt of families influencing me, that I kept silence and would not, would not speak, would not open the door. Verse 35, oh, that one would hear me. Behold, my desire is that the Almighty would answer me. 
And my adversary had written a book. Surely I would take it upon my shoulder and bind it as a crown to me. Verse 37. I would declare unto him the number of my steps as a prince, the number uh, of my steps. If my land cry against me or the furrows likewise complain, if I've eaten the fruits thereof without money or have caused the owners thereof to lose their life, let the thistles grow instead of wheat. And let uh, weeds grow instead of barley. These are the words of Job that ended. Wow. Wow, wow. So much in there, right? So much in there. But I just bring you and circle and highlight sexual sins are so destructive that they affect so many. The Bible talks about sins that are affect primarily you. And uh, are confined just to sins of you uh, and God uh, and don't affect members of family and of people and etc. etc. But sexual sins um, have such power of destruction. And so I want to again uh, uh, highlight that and underline that and then uh, share with you that it. Our harvest in your life can be uprooted if we continue on and the host of areas you and I have already learned uh, today. So I want to pray and I want to uh, uh, give God thanks for His instruction and His Word because He loves us. So let's pray. Father, I thank You again for Your living Word. You have said it's sharper than a two-edged sword, able to divide... Uh, uh, the flesh and spirit, able to, to divide uh, uh, the soul and even the intents of mankind. For nothing is hidden in your sight. Everything is laid bare before the eyes of him to whom I must give an account. And I pray that the power of the Lord Jesus Christ would break the chains of sexual sins in uh, lives Today, in Jesus' name, it would be broken on the mother's side and the father's side for generations and on that we would see the beautiful um, uh, inheritance of the saints within children, grandchildren, and lives that are touched by you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Beloved, we love you. Tina and I send our deepest care, prayers, and love to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.